I have a couple of um, visualisations of this eating disorder. One, one, and they're the both, they've both come fairly recently. One is this science fiction type monster that hovers on the top of each ceiling of our house. And it just hovers, it's huge, and it's up there, and it never leaves us. So it's part of the family. Sometimes, especially after we'd had a session with a psychologist, they were the most awful days because she, she would panic and her anxiety got terribly high and um, we were dealing with almost panic attack sort of things. And she was completely out of control and we'd try and just hold her and you couldn't hold her and you couldn't talk to her because anorexia was in her head telling her what to do. And it was very, that was powerful. She was able to talk about the fact that anorexia was saying terrible things to her and she felt bound to obey what anorexia was saying and yet there was a tiny little part of her that could hear us too and that's, that's what we t spoke to. Yeah, it does, it does seem to develop a, a personality of its own which is... Uh, and, and you... And you reminding yourself constantly of your memories of this girl that you knew preceding illness. Uh, you're reminding yourself constantly that this is, this is not, this is out of, completely out of the character of the girl that we know. So yes, it, it develops some very nasty personality traits which um, result in all sorts of bizarre behaviour. Sometimes Sonia says, well, I know this was her and this was the eating disorder. But at times she says, that, I know that was the response, but I don't know where it came from. So we just have to deal with it in the best way possible. If I'm really severely malnourished, it's never background noise. It's always loud and it's always screaming. Or if I've got something really stressful, like I've got lots of appointments in a day, it can be really loud and it can be yelling. But if I'm eating all right and I'm resting enough and I'm not that stressed, then it can be background noise and it's easier to fight it and to argue with it and to overcome it when it's background noise. Uh, it also, uh, we find, there are certain, certain statements people make that set it off, like, oh, Veronica, it's really nice to see you. You're looking really well. Her, I know by saying that to her, the voice in her head will go berserk. It will take over. It's almost like when people are brainwashed by also a religious cult and they're just speaking and you think, that's not the person I used to know. And um, you need to deprogram them. We had a girl who would never swear at her parents, has always been very respectful, using foul language, um, inappropriate times and, yeah, just a complete different person in front of us. That was a steep learning curve. <laughs> For a long time you're trying to think you're talking to that child and you don't realise that you're actually talking to an eating disorder. That Probably we've got better at that this time. Mm. And I'd feel like it, I was the schoolgirl and here's Malcolm coming home and it'd be like you know two siblings fighting and he'd be thinking, well, who's done what and who do I listen to? And you know, it must have been just awful for him. And it just makes everyone oh, in the whole family feel sick a lot mm. of the time, I would say. She can be quite um, hostile when she's not having a good week. And I think I just have to, I accept that it's not her that's being hostile, it's the eating disorder. And, I've, and I don't find it too hard to separate what she says when, she, when it's the eating disorder that's got hold of her. I just know it's not her, it's so unlike her. Um, I often, and this is something that I've learned, I spend, often talk about times in the past. She loves talking about the past when she was younger, happy times, we talk about holidays. So just trying to sort of reconnect almost with how she used to be. I used to tell her that if she ate like normal meals, then I'd get cancer. So something bad will happen if to your mum and your dad if you eat. So. It really is a separate person, and that's not Veronica because I've known Veronica for twenty years. That's not that. That's not Veronica. It's it's like she's inhabited by something else. So we, that's why we separate the eating disorder 
we we never I know some people name it. We just never named it. We Not used really. to call it He or the Monster. And then there was Veronica. For a long time there was only the eating disorder that came to the forefront of Veronica and her behaviour. And she does act differently. She has a different look in her eye. She moves differently. She behaves differently. When Veronica's there, it's a, she's back to the person we know. They're very separate. I don't understand her thinking while she was in the grips of anorexia. I don't think she does either, really. It was just a very powerful thing that she had to obey whatever peculiar rules had been put on her. We had a name for this illness to try and uh, separate it from, uh, f from the girl that we knew. Uh, so we often talked about this particular character. Um, and that was important as well because we were dealing with a, uh, an aspect of, uh, of our daughter which was, was not the real her. And that also helped us to, um, to view the illness as uh, a, s a separate thing and uh, took a lot of the blame and the, and the, uh, the anger that we felt uh, away from directing that at, that, that at our daughter. One way I've coped, I mean, I, th I suppose by seeing this, the eating disorder as something separate from her, I found that very helpful. Um, I've got a very strong image, and this may not be relevant to other people, in one of the Harry Potter movies, The Order of the Phoenix, when Voldemort is trying to get into Harry Potter, and it's, it's this evil force trying to take him over, and into Harry's mind comes all the sort of happy times that he's had and his parents who loved him and his friends and times laughing. And I think that's what's going to stop her or give her the strength to fight the eating, eating disorder. Uh, Veronica's paediatrician has a great... Um, he, he always says that it's like, you know, an eating disorder is an octopus and it has its tentacles in you and it takes a whole array of people to start pulling them off. Because you can't do it on you your own. You can't do it on your own.